Hey, Ian, can you hear me? Craig, can you hear me? Uh, gentlemen, can you guys hear me? Hey, Ian, can you hear me? There we go. I hear you. Can you hear me? Frank, can you hear me? Oh, I just hit unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. There's been a little bit of a delay there. Um, okay. You guys are unmuted now. Um, I have the still. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay. Let me. Uh, yeah, me... hear you fine. Oh, that was it. Great. Um, so, again, we're seven minutes away from starting. Uh, we are live. Um, just a heads up. So, we'll start at 12 on the dot and I'll count you down. Yeah. Sounds good. Great. That's why we're going to get camera equipment. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Hello? 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 Uh, Ian, it looks like your phone got muted again one more time. Maybe because we're not going. Yeah. It's good now. We're good now. Okay. Thank you. Rush. 
Yes. Let's go live, yeah? Okay. Okay. We are, um, I think on week 48, I'm lost as to how many weeks uh, we've done, but since we've done a lot of landscapes lately, um, and I did some figures in landscapes, I kind of wanted to concentrate just on a figure. Some are turning to one of my favorite subjects, which is musicians. And um, this happened to be a, musician playing in Central Park, uh, and it was pretty cold. I think it was in March, so he was bundled up pretty tight. Um, the difficult part about this painting is the saxophone, and that's going to be indicated. So I, because of that, I got a little bit of sketch down uh, with my brush, just kind of, just to kind of get some of that saxophone information in there. I don't know how much I got in there, but we're going to indicate it anyway. Um, with that, Let's get started. So I'm going to start, I always start with the background. The background is kind of a out of focus Central Park area. So I kind of want a little bit of green, a little bit of ochre. And I'm just going to do a little scumbling at first. Let's see, that's a little too dark. Bring a little yellow and a little, um, that's probably pretty good. A little bit of, I, I have some unbleached titanium. I'll, I'll mention kind of what I've got going as far as AM. A palette in a little bit, but this starts okay. I always mix up different variations of that same color, sometimes with more yellow in it. Just you know, it's I've mentioned so many times that nature is made up of a, a myriad of colors. It's not a color, and the same when you're dealing with trees, any sort of foliage. So you want a little bit of variation in there. You don't want it to be the same color over and over. Um, just kind of getting some of the basics. Looks like I get a little more ochre and brown down in here if I want to. There's a little bit more ochre. I mean, I'm just using a real, one of my kind of crummy brushes, truthfully. This is an old brush. I don't even know what brand it is. It's brown and it's covered with paint. Um, I know that doesn't help, but it looks to me, it's a filbert. It's about a number 12, it looks to me, filbert. And I'm just using it to scrub. Now, in some cases, uh, as you've seen in the past, I'll use um, a gesso brush. And uh, I, I generally, at this stage, I'm not using real high-end brushes. I'm just kind of doing a lot of scum. I kind of like the color schemes. 
maybe a little bit warmer down towards the, um, whoa. I said, whoa, because I just dipped my brush into a um, alizarin crimson and it kind of screamed out at me, which is what alizarin crimson will do, you can kind of see. But why not throw a little bit of, you know, other color into it? So threw a little bit more yellow back into that. Maybe a hint of green somewhere in here. Maybe a little bit of asphaltum. And I've got a, it's, it's on, you can tell, so you can see the color of the canvas. It's not that different than my flesh tone. It's a little colder, maybe a touch lighter than my flesh, my specific flesh tone. So um, that's basically, you know, I, I always like to work on a tone. Occasionally I will work on a white one of these days. I think I may have already done it working on a white. Um, just to show you guys the difference. Uh, working on a tone is always a little bit easier simply because if any of that background tone comes through, generally it will kind of infiltrate itself and work almost into the color scheme that I'm working with. So I took some blue and some asphalt and into the same color I was using. And we'll just get, this little bit tonal variation back in here. I wanna get enough of this in so we can get into my main part of the painting, which is the character. Uh, but I always like to set a background up a little bit first, even if it's not exactly where it's gonna end up. I like it to be relatively uh, in place. Darker tones. So I took a little green, little brown, just kind of make different kinds of marks. If you notice, I'm using, the, that's why I hold the brush this way, because I can, I can make my arm go all kinds of different directions and create different kinds of illusions easily. Where if I'm holding it this way, I, I really only make my mark this way. I have to kind of really work to get it to change. So that's the advantage. Um, and I, um, in almost all paintings, I will start, I always say almost because somewhere along the line, there is an exception. But I would say 99% of the time, this is basically the, uh, the overall direction that I choose. Brush into him. I don't want to brush around him. And we'll take a little bit more of the unbleached titanium, maybe this time a little more ochre. Maybe I'll throw a little bit of a cat orange into it. No, nope, not light enough. I want a little bit lighter. That's that's better. Just you gotta be you gotta have some variations. It can't look boring. Boring's bad. You can quote me on that. No painting. Uh, good friend of mine, in fact, another artist, made a real simple statement to me one time. The guy's named John Asaro, and uh, who's just a fabulous. I, I think I've mentioned John before, but I think he's one of the best colorists alive. Uh, John said to me, um, basically once upon a time, he said, a painting is either really exciting or it isn't. <laughs> Just, I mean, that's really a simple way of stating it. Uh, he, and he, he prefaced it by saying to him, to me, a painting is very, it's either really exciting or it isn't. And I thought it's a very interesting way of thinking about it. And I, you know, it, depending on how you define exciting, I could absolutely go along with that. I mean, some people's definition of what's exciting and what isn't is loud, vibrant color or, or massive brush strokes, or it could be lighting or it could be, I mean, it could be a lot of different things. So, you know, it's an easy, it's an easy comment and concept to kind of go along with. Okay, so we got, that's kind of a nice, kind of a foliage-ish background. And then down at the bottom, it's a little bit more of a blue-gray, white blue-gray. So I'm gonna take white uh, burnt umber, a little bit of blue. Uh, didn't have it as light as I wanted it, but not bad. It's a little on the green side. So what do I do when it's on a green side? I add a warm. I add a little bit of, in this case, uh, an orange that I've got down there. 
paint right. Now look, see, I painted over that line that I just sketched in a little bit ago, uh, and I can still see it. Really kind of cool. Same here, and let's add a little more blue just for fun. I like this kind of underneath color coming through. And as it goes down, so there are some interesting shadows that occur. We, we have no idea what they're from, but I can tell by the look, by the lighting on his face, that they're coming from here because this side of his face is lit. So that tells me that the light is coming from there and that's the shadows are emanating from right in here. All right, so I just mixed a little blue, little umber, or asphalt them together. We'll kind of hit some of these striations in there, not worrying too much because it's so far away down from where the focal point of the figure is, which is generally the face. It's gonna be the face and, and the kind of hands around the sacks that is really the, um, that one might refer to as a focal point. Take one from here, bring it right on through them to here. And we'll just run a few of these together. All right, I don't want to spend too long on all this stuff, even though it's it can kind of be fun. You can kind of mess around with textures and variances of tones. Uh, there is a, a dark wall, it appears. It's a dark, and I kind of like a little dark accent back there, right about in here. And I just took the blue, the brown, and the white together don't want a crisp edge. I want this whole background to be semi-abstract. So intent-wise, we're talking intent once again. Have an idea what you're striving for. I want it to be relatively what I see, but without um, any definition of what it exactly is. So I want those tones in there. Let's leave that alone. Maybe we'll bring it all over here. Just leave it alone. Um, now let's get into this guy. Let's start with the darks because that makes the most sense. As long as we got my clumsy old beat up brush here, I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna take ultramarine and asphalt and the colors that I am using, just so you guys know. I have unbleached titanium. I have a radiant white, cad yellow hue, um, yellow ochre, cad orange hue, burnt sienna, a lizard, crimson, ultramarine blue, light blue, uh, sap green, and asphalt, and that's my colors. And so we're gonna start with this. I don't want this to have a real beautiful crisp edge. It's a little on the warm side. I just noticed as I put my few first few strokes down. So I added a little bit more blue to it, just so you guys are aware. Sometimes I like to push because I get a different character, an edge characteristic. Now this edge, I almost want it a little bit out of focus. So what I'm gonna do, paint it pretty rapidly, make sure I overlap into that background. If I need to, I'll take the background and cut it back into him. It's a little, a little bit more asphalt is coming out. Also, it felt a little dry, so I mixed a little bit. Look at boy, look at that medium. Man, when I th I threw just a little bit of safflower oil into that, and my word, look at that. I can get much more flow out of it. Meaning I don't have to work as hard to put my marks down. And it's the same kind of black. So unify things when they're close. Try not to try not to necessarily make them way different. So the back of the hat, and I'm staying with this big old clumsy brush because I kind of don't want these strokes to be that perfect at this point. Remember uh, the line that I've used many times is control um, versus energy. And the bigger brushes will give you more energy and the smaller brushes will give you more control. That's just a general comment. Um, I mean, I've, you can, I can paint out of control with a small brush too. But because I'm also working in a time frame that I wanna get this done quickly, um, I wanna stay with a big brush. So there's more than one reason that I'm really 
concentrating on this large brush. One of it is for energy and the other is for time. Let's kind of get this in here. I want to run this tone into the shadow of his face without it be the shadow of his face becoming exactly this tone, but we'll start with it. So, and hopefully what you begin to see is a, um, this whole piece starting to look value wise, maybe not color wise yet, and not in terms of refinement, but value wise, it's gonna look pretty much like the subject that I'm painting, which is what I want. So if you're, let's say you're painting a landscape on location, the same holds true. The exact same thing holds true. You want it to depict, you know, now if you have a different color scheme in mind and you're changing your color scheme radically, that's different. And many times uh, that's kind of an exploration process that's really fun to get into for anybody that hasn't. But I, I really suggest for people that um, don't have a lot of confidence, don't feel like they've painted it a lot, uh, don't try and change right off the bat. Just try and paint what you see. Don't try and don't try and be, you know, um, somebody who changes a day scene into a night scene or puts a yellow sky in when the sky is pretty blue. Um, you know, and if the sky is not pretty blue, don't make it pretty blue. Make it the color. So use what that's in front of you, uh, and that's the best way to learn. Once you become adept at being able to generally paint what you see as you see it, then it's worth taking some chances and just mess around a little bit. Try some things that you normally wouldn't try. I mean, for me, experimentation, it wasn't always that way. Experimentation wasn't always um, my way of doing things. You know, I, I struggled for years as most beginning painters do, just trying to paint what I saw and paint it effectively. And then once I got that down, then I started working more on my, how I use my brush. So it's first things first, value and color and drawing, get those things down first, then worry about all these other things that come into play because they're important. But, you know, if you try and do them without having the basics, you're going to struggle. Basics are really where it's at. Basics will get you through when you get into trouble. Basics are, are really, um, the, the primary reason for a painting that comes out successful. So I'm gonna abandon this little brush here. <laughs> it's not a little brush. I'm gonna abandon it. I'm gonna go to my number eight filbert. So this is a rosemary. This is a much, this is a control brush, by the way. This, it's a beautiful brush to, to bring some control to the painting. And I'm gonna, because I'm gonna start working in smaller areas like the face, I want that control. So I'm still keeping as much energy as I can to it, as you might notice. And what I did is with the same color I was using, I've, I've mixed in um, a little alizarin crimson to bring it into the warmth. So, because it, it is flesh tone, but if you notice the value is identical. In fact, uh, chances are you can't even see it. So we're just kind of working with this dark, dark flesh tone. And we're kind of key in, we're, we're basically you're putting all these uh, dark, for lack of a better word, I call them landmarks when they're, they kind of tell me what's going on in certain areas. When a little darker and colder, we're going to get interior of the ear. Okay. A little bit of where the mustache is. Let's not do that yet. Let's let's kind of get some other colors into his face, okay? Maybe in, in where the mouth is. Get that. That's a nice, beautiful, dark, rich, dark right there. That, that kind of goes from there right into the mouthpiece of the sax. So that tends to make sense. Now let's kind of get a little bit of that in-between tone. So I'm gonna bring some ochre into the picture and I'm gonna bring a little bit of burnt sienna and that went really hot really, really hot, those two colors together. And I think I'm gonna start with that. Let's see, that's well, not too bad. 
Yeah, a little hotter than I want. I'm going to bring a little blue into it to cool it down. I'm going to either bring blue or a little sap green. Either one will cool it slightly, but I don't want it. So that that toned it down. I can see right there. So we're going to let's get his forehead in here. And back. Oh, I can see real. I don't want to nail all the colors exactly right now. I'm just going to go for more of the values. A little bit more blue because I felt like a little too hot for me. So I throw a little more blue into it. Because you're going to do a lot of paint into paint at this point. What I mean is I want an intermingling of values and colors. So this is that same first burnt sienna ochre with a little ultramarine blue and white. Okay, let's go down here and then bring that down there. That feels pretty good. Uh, I, I know I'll be readjusting as I do on heads as I work all the time. Um, and I will want to give some life and exaggeration to some of the color. We're going to take, stay with eight. This is probably a little too big of a brush to do this with, but I want to get a little bit of that nose in there. There we go. Get a little bit of that in there. We'll get the eyebrow and down towards the eye socket, which I think I already have. I do. A little under the eye. I'm going to take that cad orange and mix it right in with it. So it's pretty, pretty warm right now on that cheek and in on the tip of that nose, right around the wing of the nostril. Okay, so we hit those warms. I want to emphasize a little this a little bit darker because we're probably going to end up putting more time into the face and the hands. Well, I shouldn't say that. The saxophone's going to take some time to really get it to feel correct. I know I'm not going to get everything. Um, and I kind of don't want to. I don't want, if this isn't a painting, uh, a still life painting of a saxophone. This is a gentleman playing the sax. So I kind of want the sax to be in there, but I want it to be indicated. I don't want it to be um, rendered any, any further. In fact, I want it to be rendered less than the face. And where the hands and the sacks meet are where that, the, the characteristics of rendering is gonna kind of melt together. So we're, you can kind of, I, hopefully you can kind of see what I'm getting at here. I'm building, I like to think of it as head building. Now, those, I'm going to start with those uh, glasses, just dark, dark and warm. So I'm going to bring a little more alizarin, uh, not alizarin, it's a burnt sienna into this. We're going to kind of hit that in there, all with this number eight. And then the far glasses over there. So you're, you're, we're coming up with kind of a, a loose, abstracted version of that face. And we'll try and get, make it a lot more interesting in terms of color, because the color is kind of, to me, flat and boring right now. But, because I can see in this region, for example, it gets quite, quite a bit cooler. So if I just took ultramarine and white, I don't want to do it all right now, because I want to build up to that, but I want to show you where I'm headed. So this is ultramarine and white mixed and pretty much I try to mimic the value that's already there. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. I kind of like that. I stood back, it looks okay. And I judge things from a distance always. I don't judge things as I'm right on top of them. Generally I'm wrong if I do it that way. Half the time I'm wrong if I do it the other way. You know, I just, like I said, paint like you know what you're doing, assume you're wrong. That's exactly, the way you approach a painting. And then during your evaluation process is whether you determine whether you were right, wrong, and how far off you are. I felt 
felt I had a hold back on that brush. I felt like I was trying to get too finished too soon, which is not unusual on a head. I had uh, an illustrator friend of mine years and years and years ago told me that for him, he could, he could get lost and put eight hours into a head. Um, I don't know if I could do that. I might be able to, but I don't know if I could. I think uh, when I do portraiture, uh, classical portraiture, then yes, I will probably be more apt to do that. Um, when I'm doing a, a more a painting like this, where it's not, I'm not necessarily trying to do a portrait of this guy, just trying to capture an interesting character. And so I'm painting more for the character than I am the exactness. A little cooler up there. Does it feel right? You know what really bothers me now is that ear. So I'm going to keep the this uh, brush in my left hand. I'm going to switch down. Oh, let's see. I've got a um, one of these wonderful little rosemary uh, synthetic mongoose, and I think it's a four, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm just for the ear, and we're going to kind of go this way, this way. Get the basics in there and then do the refinements. That nice big brush that I was using earlier. If you paint something in and it's wrong, paint it out. And only you can determine whether it's right or wrong. And the easiest, the, truthfully, I'm being very honest here, the easiest way to do that is to get away from your painting. The more you just sit and look and analyze, the more you're gonna see things that feel wrong and you're gonna to wanna to keep fussing and fussing until the darn thing is so overworked that you really need to wipe it out and start again. So. Face is coming on, you know what? I'm gonna leave it right now. I'm gonna leave the face because I'm relatively happy with it. Haven't really popped my brighter lights into it yet, but it's coming along. I think the only thing I'm probably gonna do is get a little bit more on that upper lip below his mustache, right there. Cause I just, and we'll leave it alone. Now let's go into the saxophone a little bit. So I think it's important, you gotta get it started. You know, if I finish one area, I might come up um, with a real nice, face and a terrible body and saxophone. So you want to make sure you get them all going at the same time. So first thing I did is I, I kind of grayed and darkened the overall flesh tone. Why? Because I want to get the hand in while well, I've got that color mixed up and we'll just kind of put that right about in here. By the way, you guys, uh, in case you're wondering why we haven't been answering questions. Well, Anna's in Sacramento today and I'm doing this uh, my son Ian is actually helping with the uh, the filming. So the answering questions uh, I will have to do after we get off. But please ask them, and I will. Uh, and then if you if you actually look online or look at the uh, image or the cast afterwards, uh, I'll be able to hopefully answer get in to answer any questions you guys might have. Um, so. And you know, I, I've mentioned, I did this a long time ago, I haven't done it for a long time. If there's something you guys would like to see um, and I feel capable, uh, I'm, I'm more than willing to put myself on the line and give it a shot. So, uh, you know, acrylics, watercolor, animals, um, anything like that. If, if there's something that comes to mind that you feel you would like to see that you haven't seen and I, and providing I feel I'm up to it and I have whatever information uh, is necessary for me to pull it off. All right, let's go back into that sacks where the darks are. Let's start right here. So what is that? It's, it's a dark, it's slightly warm. So I let a little bit more of the warmth come out. In this case, it would be asphaltum. And the big basics of this bell. 
still staying with the number eight. Okay, let's see where it's down around here where it, it, it almost gets lost in shadow from the shadow part of the hand down lose part of the sacks right in there. If I don't get it in, it's just more I don't have to paint. And it blends right in. We almost lose the jacket right into the sacks. The values are that close. And it's better that you start them like that. And then if you want to separate later, you feel the need to separate, you can always separate. You can always go back and separate. You don't have to stay with that initial um, indication that you put in there. Let's let's see if we can get a little uh, delineation between those fingers. One there. I'm, I'm looking really carefully now, but I'm painting a little faster than I would if I were trying to do something that were really, really refined. So it's a little bit more indicative. Which truthfully, which is uh, all these paintings are that way. They're more indicative than they are refined. I think, I think you know, I don't want to be redundant. I think I've said this before uh, that with, you know, when you're doing uh, a demo, depending on how long you're spending on it, uh, and I've heard of people doing six hour demos, uh, and a six hour demo, you can get pretty darn refined. Um, in a 90 minute demo, you're hopefully you have to paint with energy because you're, you're not going to get the kind of refinement that you would on a long painting. And what I hope that this does for everybody is gives you the basics so that if you want to do a much more refined piece, you have the basics as to how, as, as how to start the construction. The difference is you're more careful and you're a little slower as you go along. That's the difference in refinement, truthfully. And you go through more development stages. So you don't go to those finishing control things that I try and get into, you know, at, at I would say the, the one hour area, um, that the last third to the quarter of your painting, you're slowing down and you're not doing as much painting. I'm just kind of drawing these in a little bit. I'm probably wrong. There's a bunch of them up in here. I'm not even gonna try and just gonna, do a dark and we'll indicate them in later. Again, stay with the same color, a lot of asphaltum in this color. And I can see it gets a little lighter. So I'm gonna add a little ochre, a little, there we go. It's almost a hand color, right about here. Maybe a little darker. And if I'm too dark, I'll lighten it. And if I'm too light, I'll darken it. And if I'm not colorful enough, I'll make it more colorful. But you gotta start. You gotta start, you gotta put something down and look at it and then make those assessments. How, where am I at? Is it, is it working? Is it not working? If it's not working, why is it not working? What do I need to do? These are all questions you're, you're going through your mind as you're working, always. You're always kind of, I don't wanna say, you're not second guessing yourself. You are always, uh, like I said, you're, you're approaching it like you know what you're doing, but you're always saying, you know, is this right? Is this right? Uh, if it's close in the beginning, that's what you want. Uh, you make the assumption whether it's right or not later. Back of the arm. I just saw that. Okay, now let's uh, get a little bit more indication in the sacks, a few more darks, like down in here, I see a nice strong dark. Paint them in too bold, too bold, so that you're forced as you, as you do any sort of what you might think of as refinement, you do that and you help redefine a little bit more at that stage. Because at this stage, it's very, very abbreviated, as you hopefully can see. Uh, I'm going to get a little darker. I'm going to add a little blue to that as asphaltum. And we're going to try and get the mouthpiece in. Again, I stayed with the number eight. So far, I've used three brushes, just so you know. I've used this small number four, so we got into here. 
I've used the number eight and uh, the big clumsy number 12. Okay, this bothers me. It's real empty compared to what I see. There's a, I'm drawing right now, just so you guys know. There we go. And I wanna get this part of the hand. So we're paint wet into wet there. And a little bit of light on this finger. But I want a little bit more warmth. I got the light, but it's a little bit drab and cold. It's probably. There we go. Let's, don't want to get too perfect for them because I'm going to mess them up when I go back and do the sacks. So let's revisit the paint. Let's revisit the hat first. You know, the face then the sacks, then the hands. Okay, uh, we're about, just barely about 30 minutes into it. So do I feel good? I feel okay. I feel it's shaping up about the same speed that I want it done in. Um, we're gonna kind of start to hit some mid-tones. And I think that mid-tone's a little too light. It's basically white, brown, uh, blue, and asphalt, just pretty much those three colors. I'm gonna get a little bit more blue in there. I just look at the top of that hat and I can see a little bit more of a cool, but I wanna push it into the color. Okay. And then we'll get the dark. And here and there. Don't wanna dwell, we don't wanna fuss, over fuss the hat. I mean, I don't, want, I don't have a perfect hat, a crummy head and crummy socks. I'd rather have a crummy hat. And by crummy, I just mean kind of very abbreviated, done not to a, the same degree of finish. So we're putting, I'm not going as light. I'm leaving room to go lighter. Remember, I said this, I always try and leave room to go lighter, to go darker and to go more colorful. I don't know if other artists do that. That's the way I work. And it works for me. It might be I just don't trust myself. Okay, that's starting to look okay. Went a little overboard on that last stroke. You go back, recarve that a little bit. The front of that front of that hat, real nice, be beautiful, rich, dark, right here. So why not push that in there now, and then let it fade. And same here, let that fade. Little top notch on the hat, little button. I don't know what you call those things. Okay, let's leave it alone. You know, if I just squint at the hat, it looks fine. If I just squint at that hat, it looks fine. So now I want to go back. I want to readjust that air. I'm going to look at that ear where it sits. It's sitting in the right spot. So I, I'm, there's nothing wrong with where I have the ear. Um, I can see a little bit of the light come up a little further. So I'm being more careful now. A little more control. And I'm going to get a little lighter. And it's a lighter warm. No, the lighter is not necessarily warm nor cool. It's more, it's a lighter neutral. So. What do I mean by lighter? Well, I mix some ochre and some white. That's way too light. Too light, too fast. So if I'm doing a 30 minute study or a you know, 25 minute study, I might put pop that in there and know that I can't get any of those in between tones. But in, a, in the hour and a half that we're going, I know I have, I'm gonna have time so I can do a little bit more popping of that kind of, uh, color variation. Yeah, right there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go in on, because I'm going to have to recarve that. It's got a beautiful light in there. And I'm going to let those lights go a little neutral, mate, and then possibly a little cool. So I'm going to rest my hand like a little poor man's mall stick. And we're going to go right here. Get that bright. And we're going to hit the bright on the eyelid. That feels right. I have 
you know, you gotta get, you gotta take a look, but this white comes back further. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of the um, burnt sienna into that color. Whoa, a little too much. And I'm gonna start with it a little bit too light, too warm, right about in here. We're gonna cut it all the way to about here. Make a nice stroke. I want these strokes because they may they may be the final strokes I put on my face. So I want them to be have good character. Okay, now we're gonna. I always put put warms underneath and sneak cools in on top, but sometimes I will sneak the cools in later. Okay, I need. Believe it or not, I need to go back to the background for a second. And to define that part of the head and glasses. There we go. I call that recarving. I'm recarving that part of the face because I was wrong. And by God, when you're wrong, fix it. Okay. So we're going to be a little bit more particular right now. And I'm going to throw some glycerin into that same color I was just using for the, for the glasses. Now you notice I've been putting my finger down here, making all these little marks. No problem. That background's not done anyway. And it's just kind of abbreviated in there anyway. So I want to get the feeling of these glasses correct. And I'm deciding, I don't know what color they are in reality, but I'm making them little on the warm side. While I've got that color, mix it in kind of with the shadow color. And let's decide, we see cast shadow right about here. I'm not gonna finish it. And then the darkness of the eye, and there's a little bit of that eyelid showing. Don't like it, let's do it again. That's better. I don't want it, I don't want it to be a heavy, hard line, but I want it to be definitive. So the face is coming along as I stand back, which I just am doing right now. I can see the face is setting up pretty good. Um, I know that there's a lot more I can do to it and I will, but I do want to keep moving because I've stated, I don't want to get hung up in any one area for too long. I think I could do a little bit on that lower lip before I move on. I just, as I went down there and what that means is it gets quite a bit it's facing upward and forward. So it's getting quite a bit of light right here. And we'll leave it. Okay, let's go back to the sacks. I don't wanna to go too much further on that. Right now, I do wanna go further. Okay, I just don't wanna right now. Um, in the meantime, let's take the finger get rid of some of that junk that I get in here. Okay. Let's go into the sack. Now, according to this, it's, it has kind of a background color, a little on the green side. So I take an ochre and a little bit of my light blue, and I'm gonna start with this and see how it works. Oh, I like that, that's gonna work. So I made it darker than it appears there, so it pops from the background, okay? Now, if I take a look at that specific color that I just used, where else do I see it? So you don't have to keep remixing. There's absolutely no sense in remix. If you see that color again, where do you see it? Where do I see this specific color happening? Uh, maybe right about in here. Could be a little darker there. Right about in here. Uh, down in here. This gets a little warmer. So I'm gonna take a little orange and ochre to the same color. And we're going to try this. But you know, it's kind of paints kind of dry. So I'm mixing a little bit of my um, uh, safflower oil into it. It also feels a little light. So I'm going to dab a little bit of the uh, asphaltum into it. We'll go down here around what tends to be one of the valves. And then a little bit of Reflection right about in here. Okay, leave that alone. The reflection, I mean, excuse me, the light, not the reflection, the light appears to come up a little higher, more like in here. Not that it's really gonna matter a lot, 
Um, so again, stay where, what, I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. Where else do I see this color? Well, I see this color right here. I see this color right here. On this valve, why not get it in there now? Hopefully it's right. More shadow in the other side. A little bit on this side. How about this valve? Yeah, a little bit, right in the top part. Down, about in here. You gotta think of yourself as kind of a, an indicator in this case. You're someone who's just indicating. You're not, you're not being, you know, 100% accurate. You're just kind of making that sax feel correct. Okay, so we're gonna go here. We're gonna go here. It fades. We'll get a nice, okay. So now I'm gonna take that a little bit. I'm just gonna look. I'm just gonna go a little lighter, but I'm gonna go a little darker before I go lighter. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna paint that side of the valve in a little bit more indication of activity. And I use that word a lot, this, this word activity. Uh, and you almost have to use it when you're doing something like this, unless you're gonna really take your time and do an exact drawing of every valve, exactly how it looks, where it sits. But I'm not. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm gonna I'm indicating, indicating the feeling of the number of valves and the activity or characteristics of them. Go right down there. I'm gonna do a little blending and I'm gonna take a look at that uh, mouthpiece. And at the top of the mouthpiece, we've got those the little bands, metallic bands that come across it. And they're kind of, they're not warm, they're not cold. So I just took a little bit of ochre and blue together because that kind of, it kind of leans a little green, but painted them in a little too dark. One, two, Third one didn't go well. <laughs> Just my luck, huh? Okay. Well, a little off in that anyway. Make that mouthpiece a little bit longer. And then let's put a little light on it. So we're gonna take, I'm gonna try just the uh, unbleached titanium all by itself and see how that works if I just hit a little bit of light right here. Not bad. Let's get go up. There we go. A little bit of gleam there. Now a lot more gleam. Same color. Unbleached titanium. Keep in mind, unbleached titanium is not as bright as white. So I can I can start with a little bit of there, there, and if I want to, I can get a lot brighter. But if I look at that, you're getting a shadow right here from. This piece, and not being a saxophone player, I cannot tell you what that piece is. That's why I look at this as more of a wonderful indication that I do a, an exact painting of a sax. And that goes up. And we're staying with kind of a kind of an ochre with a little bit of asphalt, a little bit of white, a little bit of blue. I have to use the background because I don't like the stroke I just made, but it comes right in here. Okay. One thing that I noticed was it comes out of that mouthpiece. It gets quite warm right here. So I picked up some cat orange and I just popped that in there. Get a little color variation. Uh, the thumb on this hand is really crummy. So let's kind of put a little warmth to the top of it. That's fine. And I knew this was going to be the a killer time-wise is this, the intricacy of the sax. So you may see me right at the end really go super loose on it and get uh, as much feeling in it as I am. I, I'm probably right now, in my opinion, I'm going for too much accuracy. Okay. 
Okay, let's deal with a little bit of that background once again. Right. It's a little too much blue, but I don't, little color accents that are off can add a lot to this background. So if you don't, if you don't mix the exact color, you're probably better off. You're gonna make it more interesting. There we go. That's a much better stroke there that I hit on. Uh, the bell of the sax. I think that's what this is called, is this. So we're gonna hit it first this way. Pretty dark down here, it's in shadow. And then it gets a beautiful gleaming light. So I'll start with maple yellow light and add a little medium to it because I know if I just put this pure paint on, it's not gonna stick. And we'll kind of, we'll start here. Okay, I'll leave that alone. And the brightest part of the bell is right here. I'll show you how you do it. We'll just put that little snap in right where it's, it's at now. Well, I'm doing that. I, where else do I see that kind of color? Wow, look at up here. Now take more of the ochre, move it down below. And hit this a little bit. I'm going to be dancing all over the place in a second. Um, just be, so if I don't tell you exactly what I'm doing, uh, bear with me. Just because I want to get there's a little, there's some activity right here. Right up at that point. And here. There. There. Okay. We see some light. What color? Ochre. A lot of ochre. And dull it down with a little brown and blue. And let's try it. Right from this thumb down to about here. Okay, that feels, that feels fair. Let's put it that way, okay? Try not to get too hung up in it, but I feel like I am. In other words, I want there to be, I want it to be believable enough without being rendered. That is difficult, by the way. What I've stated, as a, as a goal is uh, not easily achieved. It really isn't. And that's what I used to tell everybody, uh, this is where photorealism is almost easier because you know exactly what you're, you're painting where you're doing more of an indication. Uh, you're not painting exactly, you're painting the feeling of what's there without being overly definitive. And I'm probably trying to be a little too overly defend. I, I'm just feeling it. I don't know why. Unfortunately, I'm trying to get away from it. I'm not. But let's keep going. I, I can't stop and overanalyze right now. All right, let's get the rest of those fingers in there because they're kind of messing me up because they're not in there. Um, similar right here. A little bit on the lighter side, a little bit lighter and warmer. Not a lot, but a little bit. Nowhere near as bright as, as the face. Trying to darken that finger as that plane changes down. Ah, looks okay. Same with this hand up here. Let's get a little bit of that in there. A little cooler. Interesting. It's got it's got more top light is why. The top light is the sky. The front light is the sun, and the top light is the sky. You know how you can tell? You know where the sky usually is? It's up. So because it's up, that tells you 
That's where the skylight's going to come. The sky, skylight's not going to come from the, below ever. It'll always come from above. We're going to have too much dark in here and be forced to go back and pop in some lights. All right. Let me get a feel for things. There's a little bit of a shadow here I want to get. There's a little bit of a busyness right in here, activity. We've got this going more or less correct. It's going up around. We've indicated that part of it. There's another little part. I can start using my, for some of these, it might even be more helpful. What have I dropped? It might be helpful for me to use a liner. So let me let me give it a shot and see if I it's going to help at all. Might be able to do some of that stuff a little faster. So we got something coming out from behind the hand. And because I'm painting on wet paint, it didn't stick. So I added more medium. Boy, see what happens? You add more medium, it works. So we get a little bit of light. But I'm going to throw some Naples into it because it should be quite a bit lighter right there. And a little bit there. That's pretty good. Dropping brushes right and left, but you know, I'm not going to be using any of those, so it doesn't bother me. I don't know about you guys in your studio, but I usually have way too many brushes because I love brushes off to my off to my palette. And uh, inevitably I hunt for them. Sometimes I think you're better to say, this is four or five brushes I'm using, damn it, and that's it. Uh, which is pretty much what I do when I paint on location. I just try and keep, I, I didn't bring too many brushes there, but literally I like, if you just bring those four or five brushes out, maybe keep one or two that you think you might use, but you're not sure. That, that often helps. It's quite a bit lighter down in here. So let's go back to the Naples and I'll mix that back into the color I was using. And we'll get a little bit of a here, here. Now let's bring some more ochre into that. And always on the edges, this edge, which is facing forward, gets a little bit more light. So it's kind of neat. You have always have that option, getting that little bit more light in there. Getting some busyness. A lot of little stuff going, little tiny things here and there. So the saxophone is beginning to take shape. Um, it's not right where I want it. And I'm about, you know, say uh, 35 minutes away from being what I would try to do as completion in my 90 minute uh, session here. So I don't want to dwell on it because I want to put a little time into the jacket, the pants, but this needs a lot more work. So we're going to, if I have it set up, then preferably what I can do at the end is just go in with a few little marks here and there and make the thing come together and work. Where, let's see, it comes right from there. And you almost have to isolate down individually on these valves as to which one you're doing, because it's there are so many you can get lost very, very easily. At some point you're making marks. At some point you're not painting the specific valve. You're just making marks, or as I like to say, you're doing the activity where the activity looks like it is. This is maybe a good teaching exercise for doing something as complex as a um, sax. Now, what else is really complex? You know, pianos are a little bit more boxy. They're maybe a little bit easier to deal with. Saxophones are one of the, one of the truly, I've painted them before, uh, and they're one of the more difficult elements to deal with. Okay. 
going to leave it alone for a little bit. I'm going to go into his jacket, go back to his face, his hat, come back to the sacks. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll be near done by then, okay? Okay, go back to this ground plane color here. Gonna cut in a little bit where that arm is, right about there. A little bit here. Oh, okay, so let's figure out a little bit of light on the jacket. There's not much. It's basically a black shape. But I always like to indicate a little form in some of the darks. So we're going to say, I can see right below the ear, you get a little light, whoops. It's basically the blue, the brown, and the white. And I had, I had not enough white. I think I'm better right here. Let's try it now. A little bit of light, hopefully you can see it. There, there. And I, because I'm painting into this dark color, if I'm a little too light, it's okay. Because in essence, what I can do then is just push that color back in. Kind of look into where you see the folds. You know, you kind of know where to look. Because when there is compression, like a, or a bend in an arm, things like you're always going to have some activity. So you, it kind of, it, it helps you understand exactly where you should be looking to see some of this stuff. Oh, I'm going to. Get the blue and the brown together. A little bit, boy, I just, I really, I didn't see this before. Right down. Right, there's a shadow from the saxophone on the bottom of his coat. Kind of cool. I kind of like that. I want to pronounce that just a little bit more. And by pronouncing it, I'm just adding a little more white. That's all. And And if you overpaint, by the way, if you overpaint too far one way, you know, don't feel bad about it. Just kind of go back and fix it the other way. Or if you didn't paint light enough, paint it lighter. Um, I'm going to take that same color. I'm going to deepen a couple of these ground plane shadows before I get his pants in. Because I, I want to get a little bit going into his pants. That didn't sound right. Um, so there's my dark, it's cast shadow, and the cast shadow from the sacks. Let's make that real dark. Dark, blue, and brown together. So we can come in, you can re-establish. I kind of tried to paint it and leave it as a negative and kind of overpaint it a little bit. So there's kind of the, that cast shadow from the sacks. Okay. And the pants, pants are basically going to be underpainted in two values because I don't want them to go first value. I've used just an unbleached titanium and I took the dirty color that was already in my brush, which tended to have a little bit of, of blue green into it. And I'm probably going to stay about in here. And let's take some Naples yellow light. More, I'm gonna get some more white and some unbleached titanium in there. I go real light right about here. Throw a little ochre into it. It's not too bad for just a, an indication. So I don't want to go too far with it because I don't want those pants to be the, again, the star of the painting. What do you want to be the star? Well, I really want the face to be the star. Let's go back up to the hat. 
it's going to go lighter now. We're going to take white, or a little bit of the unbleached titanium, maple yellow light and white, and we're going to go pretty light here. Let's go bling. And where do I see it? Don't see it everywhere. So each stage, it's important to, to know, at each stage you're covering less of, of the painting because you cover the majority of it and you're just doing the refinement. The refinement really comes down to just hitting those few spots that need touch-ups. And if you, but the only time that I would uh, go against that is if you mess up. And if you mess up, then you fix it. Okay, now I may have gone too far in some of these highlights up here. It feels like I have. Just take another one of these colors, bring it back down. There we go. Now let's go back into the face. Start to pu put some lights, get the sunglasses in, because I really haven't pushed lights in the face yet. Um, so I want to keep it kind of neutral and light, and I'm going to start right about here on the plane of the nose, right there. Even lighter. Okay. Don't want to start as light as you end up. You always want to leave yourself a little room. And I still have room to go lighter, truly, if I wanted to. Uh, and I may. So, uh, to me, I got the nose too white. I don't have enough uh, other colors underneath it. Above the, above the wing of the nostril. And I just, um, what I'm using for that is I just brought some uh, burnt sienna into my, there we go. Ah, that feels better. I can I feel like I can breathe with that one. Uh, let's, I'm gonna add a little blue to that color because I wanna neutralize it somewhat. And I want it on the, the, what I call the muzzle, which is below the laugh line. Down here, we wanna hit that. And it's a little, little onto his mustache. Now it gets a little bit lighter there. So I'm gonna take it a little bit, one more stage, or to try it one more time. That's it. Don't wanna overdo it. So I'm gonna go back to that lower lip. It gets really, really red, by the way. Right before you get the light, it gets real warm. So that wasn't warm enough. I threw some more alizarin crimson into the color. We're gonna try it again. Feels pretty good. Now I'm gonna take some blue to that because as it goes down on the chin, it's not as red, but it's still light. Okay. And then there's a bright highlight on that lip. So I'm going to go back to the kind of light colors I was using on the nose because it's pretty close to that color. So you see how we just pop that lip out with that stroke? Now there's some things I want to correct right around the mouth when I, I want to clean that up, get that upper lip and the mustache. I'm going to look at that eye. Very, very dark, dark eye socket, right there. I'm going to take and I'm going to add a little medium to that color and warm it up with a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. Same color, just warmed it up a little bit because what I want to do is I want to get there's a stem of these glasses that's right here. All right, and then there's a shadow from that stem. And I can actually go back and use my liner in this case. And it comes down, and then the shadow's about here. And that feels kind of kind of correct. Not a hundred percent, but close. Get that other glass back there and take that background color. Once again, I've mentioned it many times. Background color is your eraser for what's wrong with the contour. Okay. Let's put a few brighter lights in the face. I don't want them as bright, kind of neutral. One, 
is going to appear right about here. And the other up on the cheek right below, right about here. Now, if they're too strong, and I think the first one I put in there is too strong, I cleaned it, that brush. So I've got most of the pigment out of it. And I'm just going to brush over a little bit like that, like that. And each time I brush over, I just, there we go. So now if I want to punch something a little more, I can take my white, bring the white back into that color. I can actually take some blue. Because if you want it to really stand out, use the complement of the color that's underneath. If the color underneath is a little bit more orange, use a blue. And one, now I got to put a little medium into it because I, I felt when I put that brush down, it didn't stick. There's two. And right on that edge of that eyelid, three. And it comes back and gets a little bit lighter red. But the, whoops, probably pushed a little too much. I'm stepping back just for a second because I want to see how it's like. It's okay. You know what? It's better than I thought it was. Whew. You notice I said it okay. It's okay with a little panic in my voice. <laughs> That's always the case. Part of it is because when you first put it down, you're not sure it's okay. <laughs> so when all of a sudden you realize it's okay, it's like, whew. Okay, a little bit lighter with some little pops. Let's go there. There. This is the best brush to do it with, but that's what I've got in my hand right now. close to a pure white right now. Look at that gleam that, that that's starting to have right there. You know what, I don't like that edge. So I can do one or two things. I can darken that edge, which I think I'm gonna do, but I can also lighten the background. So if I do that, I can also Okay, so sometimes it's not only the color, it's, it's something a teacher mind you say, sometimes the problem is the color itself, it's what's next to it. Now, there's a, he's got a little bit of a band. And it fades and a little bit coming down There. So make it fade if you wanted to. If you want to fade more, just take that jacket color, brush that over it. But jacket color is easy to come up with. It's, what is it? It's blue and it's asphaltum. So if that's too thick, which it feels like it is, I just trim it down. All right? Any of the other areas, if any of these areas feel like they're overstated, at whatever point you're at in your painting, you can actually go back very simply with a, with that dark and just recarve. So we got a little bit of an indication. Now he's got looks like it's a button right about here. That's about all we want to do with it, and a little bit of light here. And the fingernails, the tips of the fingers. You know, you don't have time to get into everything. It's so as I as I take my eye over the piece, I notice things. Well, so I notice the tips of these fingers are quite warm. So what, let's mix a nice warm color, some ochre, maybe a little bit of alizarin or burnt sienna, whatever color works. Let's get those fingertips, and that's right the fingertip. It's not the fingernail. Fingernail is always a little cooler, and a little lighter. So there's a fingertip, and there's the fingernail. We're just indicating. It's all you have time to do. 
but you make it look correct. You make it appear like it's right on the money. So I carved around that. Now let's go down in here and there's a lot more activity. So let's see, check my time. Okay. Up in here, more light. So I'm dancing kind of between adding some lights, adding some darks, adding some indication of detail. Um, I don't like that. I'm gonna use my little tiny brush just because I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna gain more with it. So we're gonna hit a little bit here. Here. One. And take the background color. Shouldn't be doing it with this brush, but it's a brush I have in my hand, so that feels better. So let's take that little brush, bring some bright lights, some ochre, little Naples yellow, little white. I can see little snaps. One, two, a lot up in here. I need some, I need some mid-tones first. That by itself is not going to get it until I get the mid-tones. I need a few mid-tones in there, then I can pop a few lights. So I went back to the ochre and dulled it down and we'll begin to put, probably helpful to use a ball stick at this point. And since I don't have, oh, I guess I do. There's my ball stick. It's underneath some things. So I've got to do a little grabbing. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some of these verticals. First one is going to be right from here. Oh, let's do another one right there. And some little pops of light, right? Boing. Here. One comes right up behind. A few of these little cross members. Hopefully I get them in the right spots. Go between the valves, it appears. So we're starting to, it's starting to feel correct. I'm not telling you it's correct. It's just starting to feel correct. And that's kind of what we're going for. We're just going for the impression. The brush like that should make you feel good. Gonna bring a little bit when I it's if it's going too light, I just throw more ochre into it, just so you guys know. popping little pieces of light as I see them. I'm just kind of letting my eye go down and say, oh, there's a lot of little spots in here. So let's get them in there. Some bright little knobs here and there. I see down here, hit one. I see about three in here. I got that. Got a little bit more, more ochre because I don't want it as bright. So, because there's some valves underneath his fingertips. I use that brush just right. I can 
pop them in there and make them feel like they fit underneath. So that's beginning to shape up. I think I can brighten this part of the, the bell up a little bit. Um, I know I can brighten or I can darken that up. And then brighten, just take ochre into it, whatever color I had there. There we go. Kind of stand back for a second. That's it's working. I kind of have it. I want to uh, do a couple things in the background, believe it or not, to help the piece. Obviously, you want to do it to help the piece and not hurt the piece. And I, mean, I just realized when I said that, that's kind of stupid. Uh, so we carve. Brighten a little bit right behind. And we'll come down and we'll come over. Just brighten that up a little bit. And I'll take the same color. Okay, just the, I'll put it over here. So it feels, it feels, a, it, it, we want a little bit of a continuity to it. And let that go there. Hands feeling pretty good. I can see some, some things I could do to it to uh, to make it work a little bit better. Uh, for example, this one finger, the top finger, goes back around, and I didn't have it. Now it goes around. All right. Now I can take the shadow and clean up the drawing in those fingers if I want to. Uh, a little bit more here. Um, you could spend a lot of time on hands. Just, just dealing with hands. Uh, they're gonna take you longer than most anything else when you're dealing with the figure. Uh, speaking of, of the figure, go back to the face for a second. Where are we at? I'm about a little over 10 minutes away. So we're gonna come in here with some chunky stuff now. Just, I'm gonna actually put some chunky strokes into the background. Chunky meaning thick paint. So for that, I'm using solvent-free gel because it's it has more of a, of a viscosity and it holds. You can put a stroke down and hold. So you, I don't know if you can see the gooiness of that, but if I put a stroke down, look at that how it holds that stroke beautifully. So if I want to pop a few power strokes, that's what I use. I use the solvent-free gel. It becomes uh, just an excellent medium for adding so one of the thoughts that I had about um, doing things in the future is actually taking one of the paintings and really using some thick powerful paint and not you know uh, fussing around so much and really getting gutsy. Kind of like I'm doing here at the end. Uh, very often I will save stuff like this for the, for the very end of the painting to decide, you know, what I want to do with it. But uh, I've also done paintings where I'll take it and I'll use it right from the outset and really go for it. Stepping back, that's really starting to pop him, which is what I was trying to do a little bit here, is get him to snap. Uh, and again, 
as I said a little bit ago, it's not always the color of the paint of the object that, you're, that you think is a problem. Very often it can be what's, what's next to it, but that, that specific color. This is just kind of playing with color right now. Just doing something to get the thing, to, to make it more exciting. We're gonna go right here, we're gonna come in on his back. I went in too far. So what happens when you go in too far like that? Uh, Finding and losing edges can be a real treat, and it can be something you can actually play with immensely. Uh, one of the things sometimes I will tell somebody if they want to just kind of explore that possibility is to paint an apple, paint from the middle of the apple out. Okay, don't paint the apple, literally paint from the middle out. I still feel his arm needs to come out further. I think feels like it needs to be out about in here. Let's try it again. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. Back of his coat feels okay. Because the reason I want, I want that arm to feel like it comes out and then there's your elbow and it comes in. And at this point, everything's lost. And then you pick it up right around in there. There's actually another little button I just noticed too. Didn't catch this earlier, but there's a button here and a button up there. Now, how do I feel about the saxophone? I feel like I could really start, I could really start popping things on that if I really wanted to, you know, get things going. And I and pipe by popping, you go darks and lights. You don't just go one direction. I'm gonna use my mall stick just for verticals. If I had long horizontals, I'd probably use it too. Sometimes I don't use it. Uh, I, I never use it when I'm painting from life. Interesting, I probably should, but I just don't. Uh, maybe I, if I did, I might paint better from life. I don't know. Kind of like that color. So maybe I can find ways yeah, I can. Uh, I can find a little snap there. A little bit of a, I got that there. A little bit of an edge there. Why am I talking so quiet? When I paint delicate, it's like I catch myself sometimes I'm painting detail. And if I'm talking in class or something to students, I'll all of a sudden get really quiet, not realize that I'm talking so quiet. It's because I'm painting so delicate. I think, my God, I gotta be quiet. I'll paint so much better. It's not true. Not true. So we're, we're near done. We're gonna give it the last four or five minutes in here. I haven't stood back for a while, so I don't know if it's uh, where I want it to be. I can see a little pops of, of brights and colors. I can snap in here, right about in here, down, up, well, over. Some of those are a little bit heavy handed right now. It's because I'm painting fast. Something, I find, something you'll find is when you paint really fast, at least I do, when I paint really quickly, sometimes I get very heavy handed and I have to really watch it. So you, you learn about yourself from literally painting. So it's starting to feel pretty good. Something bothers me down in here, doesn't quite um, feel correct. Feel like it needs maybe a little bit more light on this side of it. I've already hit the light there, light there, a little bit more light up in here maybe. Keep stepping back. We'll go 
revisit the face one last time. Do I want to pop anything? I want to do a little something with the glasses, a little bit. Get a little bit of this glass. I, I really haven't dealt with a, with a brow line at all. Um, so if I take whatever dark color I was using, I'm going to just mix a little orange into it. And we're going to kind of try and make sure we get a little bit of that brow. A little bit below the wing of the nostril. So we define that just a little bit more, a little bit up in here. A little picky stuff now. You notice that? I'm getting picky. So with about three minutes to spare, I'm getting picky, but not till then. Please. If you get too picky too soon, you're trying to put. Uh, let's say you're doing a, oh, I don't know, let me think of something. Let's say you can do a gourd with a lot of the warts and stuff on. Well, you, you have to have the structure of that gourd in there before you do those warts. You can't paint the warts and then paint the gourd. I, you know, maybe if you're super gifted and you painted for many, many years, you might be able to get by with it. But generally, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, Let's take that. Where's that number eight? Oh, now. Huh. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, what, I, what I was going to do was, I'll do it with another brush. Do it with this brush. I was going to, once again, pull this guy's face out a little bit. Just feeling it out, seeing how how far I can push it. That may be an extreme right there. But I kind of like it. I pronounced him a lot more than he is in this particular um, setting. He's not that pronounced. And it's simply by adding more contrast into the background. That's it. Don't like to use a little brush for too long. I start fussing. So I threw some more ochre into it. And we're getting a little bit further away from him. I'm bringing a little bit more ochre into the, into the game, so to speak. A little bit more blue. Well, I think I went a little too far with that, but what the hell, let's give it a... All right, I think we're uh, calling it quits. I think I, I think actually nailed my 90 minutes for once. Um, I know I've been off in a few instances. Uh, I probably could have spent a lot more time fussing and making that saxophone so much better. But I wanted to have some fun with kind of some of the other areas in the painting. So um, I, I can see right now I could probably pronounce, uh, I'll do it, I'll take the next couple of minutes and if I can get the right color. Just pronounce those fingers a little more. It's important only because of the sax. If the fingers really 
probably a little too strong. When, when something's a little too strong, as long as I've done that, you can take just a clean brush. I'm going to sweep over it a little bit, just to soften, to soften those edges. So if you want to lose edges, lose edges, then you go back and find them. See that hand to me feels a lot better. I pronounced it and then I went back. The other one could probably use a little bit more. I could see the, um, the fingernails themselves could probably be hit. And then the light side, the very top of that hand of those fingers could be lighter and cooler like that. It's just about right. And So maybe I pushed them a little far. I don't know. I have to. I really have to sit back and look at it for a period of time. But uh, for all intents and purposes, guys, um, I will try it. If you, any of you ask questions, I'll after I have lunch today, I will uh, try and go back and look at those. Um, like I said, unfortunately, Anna's not here today. She's visiting our son. Our grandson in uh, Sacramento. So I'm here and Ian helped me set this up and he's not here right now. So I'm on my own winging it and uh, I'll try and get the camera up a little closer so you can see it and then we'll uh, bid you a nice, a happy Friday. All right, so I'm gonna lay off that because I could fuss on it forever. May do a little touch ups on the saxophone after lunch, I don't know. But I'm gonna uh, let you see it a little bit closer. So we'll kind of bring it in here, bring it in so you can kind of see what's going on. And we'll bring it straight back so you can kind of see the overall image as I'm seeing it. And pretty much that's it. So thank you all. And uh, whoa, have a nice day, all right? Thank you, Craig. Thank you. See you next week, yes? Okay. Everybody have a nice week. I'm cut, cutting it off right now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.